Hi everyone and welcome to another video of the SAFI webinar series. In this video, we are going to have an overview of the grid commands. Grids are used to ease the graphical editing of the model by allowing to create various elements of the structure accurately, and also by defining 2D planes in a 3D graphical environment. Grids can be a very effective tracking system. For example, by positioning the lines of the grid in accordance with the erection drawings or by specifying labels in accordance with erection drawings. It is possible to create multiple grids. Also, it is possible to display multiple grids at the same time. Without further ado, let's start our demo. To activate the grid command, we click on the grid command on the addition toolbar. We can also activate the grid command using the shortcut Control G. In this dialog box, we find the option to hide or display the grid right on the top. If we uncheck this option, and we click OK, so the grid will be hidden. To show this grid, we just need to check this box again. Next, to specify the plane of the grid, we simply select the plane from the list. For example, if we want a horizontal plane, we select the plane X and Z. If we want to apply a rotation to the grid, we can specify the angle of rotation here, and we specify the axes of rotation. For example, if we want to do a rotation around the Y axis, we can specify the axes here. So, the Y axis is the global Y axis and then we click OK. And we switch the view on the top view to see the rotation. So if you want to deactivate the rotation feature, we simply specify the angle of rotation to zero. If you want to change the origin of the grid, we can specify an origin in this field. For example, let's say we want to specify this grid at an elevation of 3 meters. We can change the Y coordinate of the origin to 3 meters and we click OK. And now, the grid will display at that specific elevation. It is possible to create multiple grids. And to do that, we simply use this button here to add a new tab, or in this case, your grid, and we click OK. To rename a grid, we can click on this button to rename the grid, or we can simply double click on the tab name and specify a name to this grid. So, let's say for the second grid, the origin will be zero in the Y direction, and for the first grid, it will be 3 meters. If I click OK, now I can see the two grids, each one at different elevation. To specify the lines of the grid, we use this parameter here. Since the plane of the grid is located in the X and Z plane, so, we have the lines along axis X, and we also have lines along axis Z. To create regular lines, we use this button, called Create Regular Lines. And then we specify the label schema. So, if you want to do letters or numbers, then we specify the number of divisions, for example, 3, and the space in between these lines. Let's specify 4 meters in this case, then we click OK. And we do the same thing for the other axes. So in this case, 4 lines along axis Z, we can specify the number of lines, let's say 4. And the spacing in this case, for example, is 3.5 meters, and I click OK. Then I click OK again. And then I can see my grid with the spacing and the number of lines that I specified. 
If you want to edit the grid lines, we can simply do that using the command edit lines. So, if I click on the edit lines, in this numerical table, I can specify the spacing of each line manually. For example, let's say the line B, the spacing between the line B and A is 5 meters. I can override this value from here and click OK. And then we can see the spacing updated. In this numerical table, we find the relative distance between the grid lines. We also find the absolute distance, which is the distance between the current grid line and the first grid line. So, for example, if we want to edit the position of the grid, line D, instead of 13 meters, we will use 15 meters. We can use the absolute coordinates to do that. Click OK. And now, we can see that grid line D is positioned at 15 meters distance from grid line A. We can also do the same operation for the grid lines along the z-axis. For each grid line, we can also customize the labels. For example, if you want a specific label for a specific line, we can edit it from this table. And we can also specify the extension of the grid line. By default, it is 2.5 meters. But let's say if we don't want to have an extension at the start of the grid line, we can select a value of zero. And we can duplicate this value for all these rows. We simply select the rows and we do a right click here. And we use this function, repeat field, and it will apply this value to all the rows, then we click OK. And now we see these grid lines don't have any spacings at the beginning. So what we see here, the horizontal grid lines, they don't have any extension. If we want to add an extension to these grid lines, we can always come back here to this numerical table, select the grid lines, and then we will add an extension. By default, it's 2.5 meters. And we apply this extension to all the rows and we click OK. And then we can see the extension appears again. We can also apply a skew angle for grid lines. For example, if we have a specific type of grid line where we have a skew angle applied to these lines, we can simply specify this skew angle here and we click OK. Then we will see the skew angle appears for the specific grid lines. To deactivate it, we simply set it to zero. By default, when we create a grid, the shape is rectangular. The second option is circular shape. When we select a circular shape, we need to specify the radial lines and tangency lines. First, we create regular lines in the radial direction. We specify the number of divisions, for example, eight, and we specify the spacing, which is an angle. And in this case, let's add an angle of 30 degrees. We click OK. And we do the same operation for tangency lines. We create and specify the number of divisions, for example, 4, and the spacing between these lines, 3 meters. Then we click OK. Now we can see the circular shape and grid. Now let's create a simple rectangular grid line. For example, we have three divisions of three meters. And here we have four divisions with four meter spacing. Click OK. We can see this grid is positioned on the X and Y plane. 
If you want to change the plane, we can change it from here. Now it is positioned on the X and Z plane. We can edit the grid graphically using the editor command. In the editor command, we can edit each line individually by simply clicking on it. To edit a grid line, we use the command edit, then we click on the line that we want to edit. In this dialog box, we can specify the label, the position, and also specify the extension as the start and the end. So, if we want to change the position, for example, to 5 meters, we can simply do that from here. We can insert a line using the insert command, so we specify a reference line, then we add the distance from the reference line, for example, 3 meters. We also have the command delete. If you want to delete an existing line, we can simply use this command to do that. We have some graphical commands available here. You can translate the grid and you can also use the zoom in and the zoom out option with the wheel of the button of the mouse. And if you want to fit to the screen, you can use this command. We then click OK to validate. It is also possible to create grids from a selection of joints. In this model, we already have a grid at the base of this structure. I'm going to delete this grid. Now, using the selection command, we select the joints of the base. We use this button on the Addition toolbar to create a grid from this selection. In this dialog box, we specify a name to this grid and we specify the plane of the grid. In this case, it's X and Z. And if we want to add a rotation, we can specify it here. Then we click OK we should see the grid that is created automatically. That's it for this video about grids. Thank you for watching and catch you in another one of our webinar series videos.